In this video, I'm going to show you a very powerful feature of the Virtual Identity Server, and that's the feature of Virtual Dynamic Groups. Dynamic groups look like standard LDAP Active Directory groups to the application calling it, such as SharePoint. With one key difference for these groups, they're not static members of the group. Instead, the membership of the group is built on the fly and in real time. So let's take the example, SharePoint reads for all the members of the managers group, and this is defined as a virtual dynamic group. In this case, VIS would query Active Directory with the filter that was defined for title equals manager. And in this example, Jane Doe and John Smith both met the criteria where their title was equal to manager, and they were returned to the calling application, which is SharePoint. And that application now can make access decisions based on who was returned. But as we know, you know, data changes throughout the environment, whether that's an AD administrator making a change or whether there's an automated process such as uh, Microsoft's Identity Lifecycle Manager or Forefront Identity Manager in the next release. So if data is changing on this uh, objects, and maybe John Smith, his title goes from manager to supervisor, and this change is reflected down here in Active Directory, the authoritative source, the next time that SharePoint queries the virtual identity server, only Jane Doe is going to be returned to the application. So the big benefit here is we're going to define our criteria and our rules within our application such as SharePoint. And as the data changes in Active Directory, the authoritative source, regardless of how it changes, whether that's an administrator or that it's an automated process, the application will see those results without any additional involvement from an administrator or from extra processing. So let me show you this in action as well. So I'm going to bring up our management console to see how this actually works from an application such as SharePoint. I'm going to come into our interface, this is our interface into managing the, your environment, and go into the dynamic groups. And notice I have two dynamic groups defined here. I have an all users group and I have a marketing docs group. This marketing docs group, if you take a look at the definition, it's a, a, an LDAP filter ultimately. And object class equals users, title equals manager. And what I've done is set that as the criteria, just like we saw in that PowerPoint, as who should be a member of this group. And if we take a look here, several people are members of this group, right? And this was a query that went through the virtual identity server, through the virtual directory, a real-time proxy. And notice that actually some of these people are from our Atom directory and some from our AD directory, because we have, of course, a multi-directory or a multi-forest view with the virtual identity server. So executing that query just ran across multiple directories. Um, just one other note, uh, in terms of developing these filters, you don't actually need to know how to develop an LDAP filter. You can use our filter builder application and actually add clauses uh, off of standard attributes, uh, anything with a starts with, contains with. So n no LDAP coding is necessary, needed for your administrators to create these. So now let's take a look. We've, we've looked at several of these people in terms of who meets the criteria. Let's see how that looks actually within SharePoint and how we define those. So uh, I launched my browser and uh, I was seamlessly logged into uh, SharePoint uh, because I'm logged in as administrator here uh, into the box. And I do have SharePoint configured to the virtual identity server. So I can log in now with users from either that Atom directory or from uh, Active Directory. I'm going to log in as John Smith, who's a user in uh, Active Directory. And actually, let's come back here to our management console, and I'm going to launch our LDAP Manager browser application. So this is a standard browser, uh, LDAP browser. And let's go take a look at that record in Active Directory. Let's go look at John Smith, who I'm logged into SharePoint as. Uh, notice he's actually a member of two groups. He's a member of this all internal AD users and this all users. And actually, both of those are dynamic groups. So I'm looking at the member of attribute on a user. And VIS is keeping updated and adding to Active Directory. So an application coming through the virtual identity server is also going to see member of. So not only if you query a group, but if you also look at a user and query their member of, VIS is adding to that these dynamic groups that a user is a member of. And uh, John Smith is a member of this uh, dynamic uh, group. He's also a member of an auto group. Uh, please uh, see the other video on auto groups to, to sh see about that feature. So. Uh, Again, we're logged in as John Smith. Let's go to this marketing materials folder. Uh, if we take a look here, notice uh, I don't have full permissions logged in as, as John Smith into this uh, marketing uh, 
materials folder. And the reason is, is because uh, I don't have the appropriate permissions. So I'm going to go ahead and change his title from supervisor to manager. And when I make this change and we refresh his record, notice again, proxy here, we're not storing any data here. Notice that the next time the virtual identity server computed that, uh, he was a member of the marketing docs group. So he's a, now a member of that dynamic group. And if we hit refresh in our browser within SharePoint, there we go. We have now uh, full permissions to this document library. And that's uh, you can see that by all these menu options. And actually, we can come and take a look at the document libraries, go into permissions, and here we see that marketing docs. So I actually chose that group out of People Picker in SharePoint, and it queried over to uh, VIS. Of course, SharePoint thinks it's talking to Active Directory, but in reality, it's talking to a virtual directory. And I assign the permissions to the marketing docs for full control. So again, make this change. If we make a change for his title, uh, change it back to supervisor. On the very next uh, browser refresh, he will uh, lose permissions within SharePoint. And there we go. So what this means is, is uh, SharePoint administrators don't need to get, to get in touch with Active Directory administrators and create these groups for most of the document library permissions uh, within SharePoint, uh, for example. you are able to set up your rules, define who would have access, and then as the data changes within your environment, people are automatically removed or added in terms of access to SharePoint. This greatly reduces the administration and the cost and the complexity of an application such as, such as SharePoint.